Welcome back to our mini-series on meditation for beginners. Last week, we've already looked at the interplay between our everyday life and our ability to meditate well. This week, we're going to be looking ourselves a little bit further at what we can do to put ourselves in the mood for meditation and also how to liberate the mind from external circumstances. Because every one of us feels that we like to have our life under our own control. We feel we'd like to have the freedom to make the choices about our lives without being controlled by other people or external circumstances. People who feel that they're being infringed upon by other people or circumstances, sometimes they want to rebel by taking drugs, running away from home. And it used to be just the teenagers who felt like that. But nowadays, more and more, even grown-ups, they feel that they have to rebel against the circumstances which seem to be taking away their freedom from them. Sometimes we run away from the things which are affecting our freedom, but alas, it's out of the frying pan and into the fire. We find other things to take away our freedom instead of the things we've been running away from. But what we should be really learning from these sort of situations is that the real freedom we have is not to be free of the other people who would try to control us, but rather how to make our own mind free from the circumstances around us. In the olden days, scientists used to think that human beings were just like animals. That means that all the responses we have in life are just a series of reflexes, where if we get a certain stimulus, then we'll have a certain response, and it will be the same every time. But the thing which we think is different about human beings is that human beings have the free will to decide how they're going to respond to a response. Today I'd like to tell you a story about one psychologist who learnt to his own surprise that in fact the human being does have more power over their response to their circumstances than would immediately meet the eye. This psychologist was called Viktor Frankl. And before the Second World War, he was a psychologist who subscribed to what we call a determinist school of psychology, which means that he thought that all human behavior could be explained in the same way as you explain the behavior of a lab rat. If you get put in certain circumstances, then you always have certain responses. Unfortunately, as he was doing his research, the Second World War broke out, and because his family was Jewish, and he was taken away to a concentration camp with the rest of his family as well. In the concentration camp, of course, he was deprived of all his freedoms. Many of his family actually lost their lives in the concentration camps. And for him himself, he didn't know from one day to the next what he was going to eat, what he was going to be allowed to wear, or even whether he would survive until the next day. So he was in very dire circumstances indeed. Normally under such circumstances, then he would be very depressed because all his freedoms of choice had been taken away from him. But having time to reflect on his own situation there in the prison cell, he started to realize that there was still one freedom which had not been taken away from him. And that freedom was that it was up to him how he responded to the circumstances around him. You could say that other people could inflict suffering on him, other people could take away all the choices in his life, but it was still up to him how he responded to the circumstances. Little by little, Viktor Frankl started to make a greater and greater distance between himself and his outside world. He started to give his mind more and more freedom, as if his mind was deep in a bunker inside himself, where he was still aware of the circumstances around himself, but he didn't react to the circumstances in a negative way anymore. What he found was that he got more and more encouragement from his situation, even though he had no physical freedom, but inside his mind felt free from the circumstances. And by meditation, he was able to have more and more independence from the loathsomeness of his surroundings. The strange thing happened was that Viktor Frankl became a person who was full of morale. He was a person who had a lot of encouragement just for himself, but also for the people around him in the prison as well. By the end of the war, and in fact he was to survive the war, he was the one to be giving the encouragement even to his prison wardens and guards in the prison as well. When he got out of prison at the end of the Second World War, he started to write completely new books about how powerful the free will of man can be if you are able to make the distance between the outside circumstances and the mind inside ourselves. And really, when we're talking about meditation, this is exactly what we're aiming to do as well, to put more distance between the outside circumstances and the happiness which we try to maintain inside the mind. 
Really, a lot can depend on our attitude to the world around us. Some people blame their boss for getting them down, for being unfair to them, for upsetting their lives. But in fact, it's not our boss which gets us down at all. Take the following scenario as an example. Supposing one day you've been making entry on the lottery and you'd heard the news that you'd be the one to win that lottery that day. If that had been the case, then you wouldn't have to work anymore all your life. Maybe you get $10 million, which are going to help you out so that you could buy that dream home on Hawaii so that you wouldn't have to listen to your boss anymore. So that day you are preparing to go to work to hand in your resignation one month in advance for what you think is going to be the start of life in paradise. And that day, even if your boss comes up to you and is sarcastic about your work, you wouldn't feel anything anymore because you'd be so over the moon about your prospective happy life ahead of you so that you find that you're not affected by any of the negative emotions around you. Even if your boss were to chide you or insult you, you would feel completely impervious to his comments. But supposing later on that day, you were to check again through the newspapers and find out that in fact your lottery number was one different than the one which you had bought the ticket for. So in fact you hadn't won the lottery ticket at all. You hadn't won the lottery, you hadn't won your 10 million dollars. So in fact all that elation which you felt throughout the day was based on nothing more than an attitude, not on winning the lottery at all. But it doesn't alter the fact that it did make you impervious to all the negative emotions around you during the day. So this just goes to show that the way we see the world can do a lot to affect how much of the negative emotions we pick up from the world around us. In the ideal world, we would be able to have the elation and joy of mind the whole time, which would help to make us impervious to all sorts of negative emotions around us. It's like we make a gap between the outside world and the inside world of the mind. Of course, there are some things which will weaken our resistance to this. For example, being ill, or perhaps putting ourselves into situations where we are compromising our ideals, or perhaps when we don't feel good about ourselves. But if we meditate more, it's as if we manage to make a greater distance between the outside world and ourselves. And this sort of thing gives us the real freedom, which even though you're put in chains, you still have the freedom of mind and the freedom to be happiness inside yourself. It allows you to keep your temper no matter what the situation you find yourself in. So what is important is that we don't rob ourselves of our own freedom. Instead of blaming it on other people, we should be looking at situations, how to free ourselves in life. One last metaphor I'd like to leave you with is of a certain thing we call the Indian monkey trap. Because the Indians are very clever people and they can manage to catch monkeys without guns, without spears or arrows, simply relying on the monkey's own stupidity. You know what they do? Well, they make a piece of wood with a hole in it. In fact, it has two holes. One hole is large enough to put your hand inside. The other side is just large enough to put a banana inside. And what they do is they put this ring on a post. They put a banana inside for the monkey to come along and to reach for the banana. Once the monkey puts its hand through the hole in the ring and grabs onto the banana, it turns out that the monkey's fist is too large to be withdrawn from the hole anymore. For as long as the monkey holds onto the banana, they are unable to escape. But because the monkey is so attached to the banana, they will never let go of it for sure. So the hunter just waits until the monkey has taken the banana, and that's it. He can come along and take the monkey away without using any weapons against the monkey at all. And the monkey ends up as monkey soup in a very short time. If you ask who's the stupid one in this situation, of course it's the monkey. But in fact, it was up to the choice of the monkey the whole time, whether to run away and leave the banana behind, or whether to give in to the hunter's uh, deviousness. We may laugh at the monkey, but in fact there are many situations which we put ourselves in where we are no smarter than the monkey. Simply by not being able to let go of our attachments to the world around us, sometimes we lose our freedom to be independent in the happiness of our mind uh, in many situations in the world today. Last of all, I'd like to leave you with some hints on how to build up the right sort of mood so that you can meditate better. Because perhaps you've noticed from day to day that your feeling when you sit down to meditate may differ. 
Sometimes you may be in the mood for meditation. Sometimes you may not be so inspired for your meditation. I don't know if you ever thought why that would be. But I think if you experiment and you try to do activities which you enjoy before you meditate, you find that it helps to put you in the mood for your meditation, allowing you to spend the time which you sit with your eyes closed to meditation in a more efficient manner. Some things which some people have found helps them to meditate better is to do something they enjoy before the meditation. For example, taking a walk in a peaceful country environment, perhaps doing some sport or some exercise before they sit down for their meditation. Some people find that tidying up the room around them, especially the room where they sit for meditation, can help to make a more uncluttered environment for the mind as well. Some people like to brush their hair, take a shower, or even cut their own fingernails. They find that that is something which helps them to be more in the mood for meditation when they come to sit down for meditation. The other thing you may find useful to avoid is meditating immediately after you've had a heavy meal. Sometimes if you've digested the meal properly and you sit for meditation only then, you'll find that it's a more suitable time for you to sit for your meditation. In any case, you have to experiment with yourself because each person is different. The sort of thing which sets the right mood for a person to meditate is different from person to person. So you are the best judge for yourself of exactly what sort of activities before your meditation will help you to meditate better in the time you meditate for yourself. So, this week we've already looked at some of the methods by which we can liberate the mind and to claim our own freedom from the negative attitudes in the world around us. Also, we've been looking at how to put our mind more in the mood for meditation with the activities which we do immediately before we sit down to meditate. So, for this week, I'd like to leave you with these thoughts, give you the encouragement to find a time of the day to meditate for yourself, also to avoid any anxieties which you may have come across in your life, keep yourself healthy, and in the same time, uh, meditate to the best of your ability, and I'll be seeing you again next week.